Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope that everybody is doing well today. If you are new here, then hi, my name is Brittany. I'm a nurse practitioner. I'm currently sick right now and hence you're just going to hear my voice and not see my face. But yeah, I'm a nurse practitioner that has a love for teaching. And so lots of what you're going to see here on my channel is educational, not only for the nurse practitioner student, but also the established licensed nurse practitioner as well. Before we do get into today's video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. It's a completely free way just to say thank you and I really appreciate it. So today I'm going to discuss interpreting your patient's complete blood count or their CBC results. I've had a few people reaching out to me on my Patreon requesting information on lab interpretations and I just think it's a really great point of discussion. So in this video today, I'm going to specifically discuss with you white blood cells and what's seen on the CBC with differential. For that complete video where I will also discuss red blood cells and platelets, if you're interested, then you can find the total lecture on my Patreon by following the link in the description box below. It's available for all patrons, so if you're under my $5 tier or if you have access to the board's review tier, everybody will have access to this video. All right, but let's just get into today's discussion. Now let's talk about the white blood cells or the leukocytes. So we know these are very important in fighting infections. So a normal white blood cell count is generally between 4,000 to 11,000. An elevated white blood cell count, this is also referred to as leukocytosis. So white blood cells too, they also have very important individual components that are really important for us to understand. And that's the different types of white blood cells. And so there's the neutrophils, the lymphocytes, the monocytes, eosinophils, and then the basophils. And this, this breakdown here of the white blood cells is what is included on your CBC with differential. So to clarify, a plain CBC does not provide a breakdown of the white blood cells, such as the CBC with differential. And so that's why ordering a CBC with diff can be so much more helpful in your diagnostic process because you can look at these individual white blood cells and see what's elevated because these often have specific correlations that can at least help you in your diagnostic process. And we're gonna talk about the breakdown of these a little bit more. So like I said, the CBC with differential, we look at, we can break down those different types of white blood cells. So again, we have the neutrophils, the lymphocytes, the monocytes, the eosinophils, and the basophils. Before we get into the different types, I think it's a good question to ask yourself, you know, what could be causing an increase in white blood cells? Of course, infection, right? This is the first thing that pops up in her head. Also though, cancers, specifically leukemia, this can cause a significant elevation in white blood cells. Other miscellaneous things, so steroids. Steroids have been shown to be associated with an increase in white blood cells. However, within reason, if a person has a market elevated white blood cells, like 50,000, 40,000, this is extremely high, and this is likely to correlate with something else. And so you definitely want to keep that in mind. Again, we're always looking at the whole picture. Also, traumatic events or extreme stress on the body, so for example, a myocardial infarction, this has also been known to increase a person's white blood cells. And so there's really a lot of things that can cause these to go up and why we are looking at all of the different factors at play. You know, so of course, are they symptomatic? That's really important. Are they actually having symptoms? Are they having pain? Are they having fever? Do you have access to previous labs? And this is really huge because if you do, then you can look at trends and trends are everything when you're looking at labs. A 15,000 white blood cell, you know, that's elevated. But if it's coming down from 20, 30,000, we're happy with that number then because it's actually a sign of improvement. And so if we can trend the labs, that's a very uh, useful tool. All right, so let's talk about the differential. So first, neutrophils or segmented neutrophils. These typically make up about 50 to 70% of white blood cells. An elevation in neutrophils, this is often seen in bacterial infections. Band neutrophils, these are slightly less mature than segmented neutrophils, and these typically account for about zero to 5% of white blood cells. In practice, you could hear the term left shift 
So this is often seen in a bacterial infection. And so, you know, of course, what does a left shift mean? It's an expression that is used to describe neutrophils that are shifting to the left or shifting towards immaturity. So they're shifting towards more immature cells. And therefore, during a left shift, we see an increase in those immature cells being the banned neutrophils. Again, elevations in neutrophils and the presence of a left shift seen on your differential, this is highly indicative of a bacterial infection. And so next we see lymphocytes. These generally make up about 30 to 45% of white blood cells. These are often increased in viral infections. So for example, infectious mononucleosis, among many other viral illnesses. So for example, HIV, influenza, hepatitis. These are just some examples. One bacterial infection that can cause uh, lymphocytosis or an elevated lymphocyte is pertussis, also known as whooping cough. Also, uh, leukemias and lymphomas as well have been associated with an elevated lymphocyte. Monocytes, these generally make up about 0-6% to 6 of white blood cells. Typically, again, these are elevated in viral infections similar to the lymphocytes. Eosinophils, these generally make up 0-3% to 3 of white blood cells. An elevation seen here often correlates either with an allergic reaction or various infectious diseases again, specifically though parasitic infections. So for an example, um, elevation in eosinophils is seen with scabies. Examples of allergic disorders that we could see an elevated eosinophil, you know, asthma, atopic dermatitis, also medication reactions. So for example, if they had an allergic reaction to you know, penicillin or cephalosporins, and then finally, basophils are listed here as well. Those typically make up about 0 to 1% of white blood cells. An elevation here is seen also in allergic response similar to the eosinophils. And this example here on the slide, uh, we can see, you know, this patient definitely had an elevated white count. It was 13.8, so not extremely high, but elevated. And when we go down and we look at the differential here, the different white blood cells, the elevation is mostly we see elevation in neutrophils we also see an elevation in monocytes the uh, elevation in neutrophils likely indicates that this pa patient did have a bacterial infection of course again this is only a small part of the whole picture of your patient and there's lots more information that we have to take when diagnosing our patient but so much useful information is provided here on your cbc and so I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know in the comment section below if you did. Don't forget, this is just a portion of the lecture. For the complete lecture, then go ahead and follow the link in the description box below, and that's going to take you to my Patreon. Also, I think this is a good point to remind you, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, and I appreciate it so much. Don't forget to learn something new every day, and as always, I wish you guys the absolute best, and we'll talk soon. Okay, bye. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.